Hi there, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about how to visualize data inside maps. Now with mapping, we're all about how to understand the world from local, regional, national, international, or global scales. We're all about how do we understand or make sense of the world. Now one of the ways is to map things. A key way to understand the world is to map things. And what we want to do with heat maps is to visualize data in such a way that we understand whatever we're mapping better. What are we mapping? It could be, in the case of the first example today, it could be incidences of disease. It could be pH of soils or other soil chemistry data. It could be occurrence of graffiti or trash around your school or your neighborhood. It could be temperature or other kinds of data that we want to visualize and understand better. Okay, so that's why we make maps and that's why one of the tools that we have to understand our world better is a heat map. Now let's just take one example here first. This is an area in ArcGIS Online of Soho, a neighborhood in London, England. And back in 1854, a guy named John Snow mapped incidences of cholera, a certain kind of intestinal disease, okay, that was very serious, and indeed people were dying in 1854 in London. So what John Snow did is he went around and he mapped people's incidences of death by cholera with these little black lines, as you can see here, on residences. So you can see that certain residences, as he went down the street, had certain amount of black bars on them, meaning that, okay, in this case, as I'm pointing, there were four people that died in that particular residence from cholera. In this case, only one, and so on. So what we can do now is we can map that in different ways, one of which is a heat map. Before we go to the heat map, let me show you a modern rendering of that same data. So let's turn on the cholera cases. Now we've got these points. Instead of the John Snow lines, we've got points that now we can use inside of a geographic information system or a GIS to map and understand it a bit better. So one of the ways that I can map this is I can, let's take a look at the data behind the map. So the map is the G part of GIS. The I is the information part of the table, the database behind the map. So I'm looking at the data. I can see that number of cases, let's sort that. I can see that in a certain place, there were 18 cases for that one point or that one dot. So not all dots on this map are created equal. You see what I mean? Certain dots have more deaths associated with them than other dots. So one of the ways that I can map or visualize that is I can change the symbology so I'm looking at the number of cases. And then I can say done and now I've got, let's pop up a legend here, I've got these graduated symbol maps. In other words, bigger symbol for more cholera deaths. So in this case, I can click on this one and I can see that there are 18 cases. That was the same record in the data set that we were looking at in the table. Now we're looking at it in the map. And I can see others, for example, this one, where there, there was one case, okay? So not all of these points are created equal. And if I map it as a graduated symbology or graduated circle, in this case, I've got circles, you can change it to triangles or squares or whatever you want, then you can see that, yeah, I can see the distribution now. There's some pattern here that I can make sense of. Now, another way we can do that is with a heat map. 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 With a heat map, we can change the symbology to, instead of counts and amounts colors, we can change it to heat map. And I can say done here. Now what a heat map does is it shows the occurrence of a set of points as a, as a density a surface. Map, map, you can map. think of these colors as being hot or cold. Now don't think that heat has to be temperature. Indeed, heat maps can be of any kind of variable like we talked about before, graffiti, water, pH, soil pH, or other kind of chemistry in soils, and so on. In this case, disease, okay? So a heat map shows the occurrence of a set of points, right? We had point data as a, as a surface, as more of a surface kind of a view. Heat maps use a point density calculation to provide a graphic representation or visualization 
a map, right? So we can understand your data a little bit better as a smoothly varying set of colors from cool or low density to hot or high density. So I can see here, for example, I've got a couple of hotter areas right around where my cursor is right now where more people in this case died from cholera and also up here in the northeast part where there's another uh, hotter area. Okay, the heat map tool inside ArcGIS Online uses a Gaussian blur to render the colors through contours that are concentric circles or shapes, as you can see, with a Gaussian distribution from a center point. Now, the effect of this blurring is similar to viewing an image through a sort of a translucent screen, sort of halfway I can see through it, but halfway I can't. So that's what this is. It doesn't create new data. It just helps you visualize. Now, other tools in this series of videos that I'm making, other tools in another video that I'll highlight, uh, for example, a density surface. You can also make a hot spot map, which shows a statistically significant zones or areas on your map. Those create separate layers in your map, okay? But in this case, we're just looking at it as heat map. No new data created. It just helps you visualize it. It's also scale dependent. So if I zoom in on certain zones, you can see that my the, the, the shapes are, are, are different now as I zoom in. My hot spots, for example, are changed, okay? My, my hot areas are smaller as I zoom in and they're a bit larger as I zoom out, but it tries to keep it in such a way so that you're visualizing and looking at patterns, relationships, and trends, which is a whole reason why we make maps. So that is a heat map generated again from this set of points that we originally had inside ArcGIS Online, in this case for cholera. So I can see right here that there are certain zones that I might want to investigate a little bit further, and there are certain outlying areas, for example, in this northeast part of the map that I might want to investigate a bit further. Let's map another thing as a heat map so you'll get a further indication of what this is all about. So in ArcGIS Online, I'm going to create a new map. I've got a data set in here uh, on my computer of pH for soils. Now I've mapped that inside ArcGIS Online. It's just a simple matter of me dragging that table to this map. Now I've got this particular thing, soil pH, mapped, again, should look familiar, as a heat map. Let's look at the legend. In this case, I've got high pH as these sort of yellowish hot colors, low pH as lower in terms of the heat map or cooler in terms of the heat map. Now, what are these numbers exactly? Well, if I click on these individual points, let's go ahead and pull up the the data behind there. I've got pHs of sixes. Let's go ahead and sort this. My lowest pH is around four. My highest pH is around eight. Okay, so I'm seeing these different points uh, as a heat map. Again, here's the legend, high being eights, low being fours, and I've got it as a heat map. Now, just like for cholera, I can change this to just looking at, instead of a heat map, I can change it to something like counts and amount size. So now I've got a map showing larger circles for higher pH, smaller circles for lower pH. So I've clicked on one of these points. I see that the pH there was just a, under 8. If I click over here, it's 8 for that one. If I go to a smaller circle, it should be a lower number, and indeed it is, 6. So let's show you the scale as um, a base map. So if I look at these, see this is a set of points inside uh, certain fields in North Dakota. So I can map it as a heat map. Again, the whole idea is that you want to pick out patterns, relationships, and trends in your data. And you can do that with a heat map. Thanks for listening, and I hope that was helpful.